I said dead end. First job we have ever taken you on, and you disobeyed me. But I stopped that man. I told you to kill him. And for not killing him, you don't get a dollar. I'm no outlaw, and I'm not going to work with him. I'm through. You can't be through, son. Now go and take care of the horses. This is our big strike, boys. We'll be the richest men in the West. We will. How about? Well, these territorial bonds. They'll be as good as gold, and they're easy to copy. We'll print them by the thousands and flood the country with them. So that's what you're going to do with that printing press you ordered from Chicago. I ought to be here any day now. Well, what about Tommy? He'll trip us all up someday. If I had my way, I'd take him riding tomorrow, and he wouldn't come back. Well, I'm surprised at you, son. Tommy's your stepbrother, practically kinfolk. We'll have to let somebody else take him riding and not bring him back. But who? I don't know. Yet. Flynn, write a letter for me. Sure. Write to Ben Trask at Powder River. Tell him I want a good man for a tough job. Tell him to use your letter to introduce himself. Sign my name. Something real special, Mac. Pop generally takes care of things himself. Do you want it? Sure. How do I locate this Ryland Humbry? Anybody in Cimarron can tell you. When can you start? Today. Just as soon as I... Who's he? I don't know. Tell him he can't do his sleeping here. says it's stuffy in here. Maybe you need some fresh air. Maybe he's right. Dad. Are you going to meet Tommy Ryland? Yes, Dad, I am. I don't like it, Molly. The Rylands are a bad lot. Well, nothing's ever been proved against them. Besides, Tommy's different. 
I will admit he's better than the rest of them. Mind you, I don't like it. Don't worry, Dad. I'll go and get a shave. Hey, you better wait till Smiley finishes rehearsing the town orchestra. Hello, fat soul. Still clipping people? <laughs> I had no idea it was rehearsal time yet. <laughs> well, it's all over, fellas. Hey, Burnett, you ain't took all my whiskers off. Well, Tom, you just have to come back later when I'm not courting the lyric muse. I don't care who you're courting. I want the hair cut off the other side of my noggin. Hank, I'm surprised at you. What this town needs is a deeper appreciation of the artistic, hmm. like a greater love of music. What this town needs is another barber. And if there was another within 50 miles, I'd shoot this one. <laughs> well, fellas, for our first song at today's gathering, let's sing that old timer, It Sure Sounds Good to Me. I'm reminded of a story that a feller told to me. He swore he wasn't lying, but it sounds like it to me. There's a country off somewhere that the boogeyman has cursed. The blooming place is awful, everything's been reversed. All the women earn the living, chop the wood and they cook. While the cowhands eat pheasant, pink ice cream, read books. All the chores are done by cuties, all dressed up in lace. Trippin' over lazy cow hands that are sleepin' every place. Conditions are frightful, things bad as they can be. Everywhere it's rack and ruin, but it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. Everywhere it's rack and ruin, but it sure sounds good to me. All the horses look peculiar, building rockers on their backs. With automatic lariats taking up the doggy slack. The saloons roll on wagons and they pull them near and far. The sheriff sets a smoking, shooting rustlers from the bar. Now I know that man was dreaming. I know it could never be. Like he says, it must be awful. But it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. And it sure sounds good to me. Like he says, it must be awful. But it sure sounds good to me. Now, fellas, let's try. Um, let's try and keep it peaceful and nice around here. Uh, come in, Mr. Ryland. Shave them off. Yes, sir. Archie, Tommy, shared all of our meetings and all of our secrets. Not all, Molly. There's some things I can't even tell you. But I want you to know I'm not like the others. Oh, I do know that, Tommy. I'm not really a Ryland. Pop's my stepfather. My real name is Baker. Baker? Tommy Baker? Oh, I like that. Much more than Ryland. Tommy, why don't you quit them, darling? Get away from them entirely. I'm going to. After I get some information. About what? They're up to something. Something big. And I want to find out what it is so I can block it. Oh, please be careful. Nothing's going to happen to me. Howdy. 
What'll it be, stranger? I bought some ham and eggs. Right. Hey, man. You're new in these parts. That's right. First chance. You think it'll stay permanently? Maybe. Depends on who wants a good cow, huh? Well, now that... Hello, Smiley. Well, hi, everybody. Got my grub ready? Give me Smiley's lunch. There we are, Smiley. I sure do, thank you. Hey, Smiley, what's that stuff? That's buttermilk. Never heard of it. Where's it come from? Cows. Does not you wring it out of butter? Yeah, it must be awful. Don't drink it. Here, have some whiskey. Well, I, I don't like whiskey, Clint. I'll just drink buttermilk. Come on, have the whiskey. I... Here, you don't want this stuff. Come on, give it to no. you. Wait. Why, you clumsy gun. I didn't mean to do Look that. Look off that milk. Uh, Clint, I'd... Look it off or I'll punch a hole in you. Do as I say. You won't do anything. Oh, won't I? Look out, mister! Don't try that again, cowboy. What goes on here? This Waddy dropped your boys as pretty as anything I ever did see, Pop. One man gripped two Rylands? You Pop Ryland? That's my name. Who are you? Lacey, Steve Lacey. I'd like a word with you. What is it? I'm the man Ben Trash sent. Good. Come out to my ranch tonight. How do I get there? Follow the stage road to Rock Point and take the trail to the left. I'll be there. This is Steve Lacey. Fellow I asked Ben Trash to send. My boys, Clint, Dave. We've already met. Yeah, that's right, you did. Come on, boys. I sure do thank you, Mr. Steve. Oh, you forget it, Smiley. Tell me, where can a fellow put up around this town? Well, there's plenty of room over to my house, and see, I sure would be proud to have you bunk up with me. It's the deal. <laughs> and Tommy's practically kin to us. That's why I couldn't do it myself or let one of my boys do it. Sure, I can understand that. I'll pay 500 for the job. 500? That's fair enough price. Then it's a deal? It's a deal. Good. Here's another thing. Wednesday's stage is carrying... Pull up. Better come outside a minute. Excuse us, Lacey. Bob, you sure you want to use Lacey in a stage holder? Why not? Because we'll have to give him a full share. If we use Tommy, we don't have to give him a dollar. Use Tommy in the holder. Then let Lacey get him? That's it. Clint, you've got a good head for business. I'm proud of you, son. <laughs> Tommy, there's a friend of mine inside. I want you to meet him. Be glad to, Pop. This is my youngest, Tommy. Shake hands with Steve Lacey, Tom. Glad to know you, Steve. Likewise, Tommy. Gonna be around long? Oh, long enough to do a little job for your father. Who's that? Durango kid. We've got to move fast.
Please, sir. That'll heal up in three or four days. Yeah. Hey, Pop, how the Durango kid come to horn in on this deal? Maybe I'll be able to answer that when we get back to town. Get mounted. Hello, Lon. That stranger Lacey around? No, nope. haven't seen him all day. Uh, ask Smiley. He bunks over there. here? I said, is Lacey here? Is Lacey here? Shh. He's sleeping like a baby. I gotta see that. have you been here? Oh, since about 10 o'clock. Why? You knew I had some plans for the stage today. Sure, sure. I knew you were going to hold them up. The Durango kid stepped in and queered it. The Durango kid? I thought I'd lost him. He's been on my trail ever since I pulled a job back in Texas. You sure ought to have told me about it. I don't think Lacey's the man for the job. Maybe you're right. Now, wait a minute. I'm the one he's after, not you. But he busted up the stage, hold up. Well, an accident, probably. He might have been looking for me. Anyway, I'm not afraid of him. You're not? Look, if you think so, how'd you like to have me get rid of that squirt stepson of yours today? That would suit me fine. afraid of, Miss Parnell. You're the Durango kid. What do you want with me? Tell me, how much does Tommy Ryland mean to you? I'd give my life for him. Good, that's all I wanted to know. Now maybe we can save his. Why, what do you mean? I'd like you to do this for me. You meet me at the Grove. Going through with it, all right. Got him. Molly, you all right? Oh, of course. I, I've been falling off horses ever since, since I was a baby. <laughs> Let's ride down and make sure. The Durango kid. <laughs> You have any trouble? No. Tell me, Tommy, just why is Pop Ryland so anxious to have you shot? Because he's planning something big and he's afraid I'll spoil it for him. Well, you mean something big. Remember that bank robbery I told you about? Yeah. Tommy was forced into that. I'm convinced of it, Molly. 
Pop stole something besides money that night. What? I don't know. A couple of days after that, I saw him and the boys bring two heavy crates out to the ranch. What was in them? I don't know. That night when I went back, there was no sign of the crates or the contents. But I did find these. Why, these are territorial bonds. Where'd you find them? I was mending the roof. They were cutting the shingles. Must have blown up the fireplace. I'll keep these, Tommy. You hide here until you hear from me. Play it cagey. Don't worry. I know what I'm up against. Oh, let me have Tommy's gun belt. What for? I'm taking your gun horse back to Pop as proof of your death. You'll find another gun inside the shack. You don't miss much, do you, Steve? Can't afford to, Tommy. I'll be seeing you. What did you do with him? Well, I put him where nobody will find him for a while. Seems mighty queer to me that the Durango kid should show up right now. Nothing queer about it. I told you the Durango kid cut my trail back in Texas. If I'd have been where you was, I'd have got him. If I'd been three men instead of one with his hands full, I'd have got him too. But maybe you wanted the Durango kid to get me. Are you saying we try to double- Shut up, I'm Clint! Saying... Steve did his job. Here's your money. Thanks. What are you aiming to do now, Lacey? Stick around a while. If I pull freight now, some folks might ask embarrassing questions. That's smart. I might have something for you. I'll be a good listener, Ryland, when you're ready to talk. I'll have something to say to you, Lacey, before we're through. All right, I'll even listen to you. Up to a point. Oh, boy, boy, put it right over there. Say, I've been waiting a long time for that. I thought it never would get here. I must get it out of that box. I can see it in there, too. Give me a hand, Miss Molly. I'll hop in. I'll bet it's going to be hard to get out of there. Oh, look. Ain't that pretty? I bet there ain't another one like it west of Denver. Say. That's a right handsome piece of work, Smiley. Yeah, I give all of $85 for it, too. I'll give you 100 for it right now. That'll lull in the four aces. Oh, it meant a lot of class to my place. Say, this is a big day for Cimarron, just like a big unveiling of a monument and everything. <laughs> there she is, folks. Listen to her. Boy, howdy. Say, we can use that for fire alarm, church services, and to call out the militia. Must loose again, Smiley. Well, I'll have to charge you for wear and tear, Lon. It's all right. I'll pay for it. Cut her loose. Well, here she goes. <laughs> Say, Smiley, 
I'll give you $150 for it just as she stands. $150? Yes, sir. I can buy two of them for that much. Sold. Let's see your money. <laughs> Come on, Pop. Help me carry over. Well, hey, hey, wait. But my, my $150 is in there. Why, sure it is. That's what I said. Just as she stands. Come on, hey. folks. Hear how she sounds in long place. But, but, but long, that's not... Take those, Driscoll. Durango kid. Now, if you'll take that cash register over the window, please. What for? We're returning it to the barber you stole it from. But you can't. My money's in there. So is his. Start moving. All right, mister. I'll take it from here. only one, the Durango Kid. The Durango Kid? How do you know? Well, he did. Well, he, he came to my place tonight and made me take back Smiley's cash register. Well, so it's mine again. Oh, good. I think he's right, Driscoll. I gotta go look at... Smiley, you're just a dummy. Ah! You're not the Durango kid. Oh, go to bed, go to bed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was trying to make some sense out of those burned bonds when the Durango kid spoke up right behind me. He took them? Yeah. They seemed to mean something to him. What do you make of it, Pop? It beats me. Come on, boys. We got chores to do. Well, what do you make of it, Pop? I don't know. Maybe that barber ain't as dumb as we thought. And don't forget, Lacey's plunking in with him. You're cracked on Lacey. Yeah, but if he's the Durango kid... How can he be? The Durango shot at us while Lacey was in plain sight. Yeah, but... Uh... Shut up! Smiley Burnett's the one I want to talk to. Without interruptions. Now, 
Them musicians give me an idea. Clint, you go tell Sheriff Parnell that Tommy's missing. That'll keep us in the clear. You forgot? Sheriff's attending that rustler's trial in Porter City. That's right. Wait for me at the saddle shop. On the streets of the village stood Cecil With dark glasses and a cup in his hand With a look both pathetic and eager He cried, won't you help a poor man? His clothes were all tattered and ragged And his world was as dark as the night But just let a pretty girl go by him And Cecil could see her all right Yes, Cecil could see what he wanted to see and be where he wanted to be till the constable heard Cecil whistle. <coughs> now Cecil no longer is free, is free. Now Cecil no longer is free. What Cecil stole out through a pasture and there laid a roof long and strong. Said Cecil, my goodness, how dandy. Oh, I'll just take this fine rope along. For Cecil, his eyesight was awful. He just didn't see it somehow. He'd never have taken that fine rope if he'd known it was tied to a cow. Yes, Cecil could see what he wanted to see and be where he wanted to be. Till the constable heard Cecil whistle. <coughs> now Cecil no longer is free, is free. Now Cecil no longer is free. Right nice music, men. Shave, Smiley. Yes, sir. You and the boys gonna play for the Diamond A barbecue? I ain't heard nothing about it. They're planning a big blowout. They are? You ought to go out there and make a deal for your orchestra. Well, just as soon as I get you fixed up, I will. Cecil could see what he wanted to see and be where he wanted to be till the constable heard Cecil whistle. Woohoo! Now Cecil no longer is free. Outlaws! <laughs> Murders! Thieves! Burglars! I suppose you put all your money into territorial bonds. Oh, sure. All us rich folks, we just buy all we can get. Where'd you buy the ones that were in your cash register? Oh, I got... What bonds? And whose cash register? Where'd you get those bonds? Look, mister, I don't know anything about any bonds. Maybe. What's your tie for the Durango kid? I don't know nothing about him. If you don't quit lying, we're gonna leave you here for the buzzards. <laughs> Look, look, that gun's loaded. Really, mister, I, I don't know nothing about the Durango kid. Honest, well, I don't. Why did he take your cash register right from Lon Disco? I, I didn't even know he took it till Lon told me, really. All right, work him over. Just what I've been aching to do. Hold it. And reach. Durango. Drop that gun. All right, Smiley, tie him up. Use his scarf. You, toss your gun. Left hand. You. Tie him up. Feed me to the buzzards, will you? Ow! Work me over with a gun, will you? Turn around. 
Hands behind you. The next time you come into my barber shop for a shave, he'll give you a close one. Right, Depo. They won't bother you for... You bet they won't. Huh. Real tough. Gonna work me over, huh? We'll take care of you. Hands tied or not. Look who's talking big. Listen to him, Durango. <laughs> hey, Durango, wait for me! Look out, horse. Look out now. Look out. Oh, Ring Eye, look what you've done. You got your saddle on the wrong foot. For what, Smiley? Well, I was on some orchestra business and eight bandits held me up. How'd you get away? Well, it was sure getting pretty tough till the Durango kid come along. Say, I personally shot a whole bunch of them and I knocked out some more of them and just tied up the rest of them. How many bandits did you say there were? Well, it was pretty near three. Oh, Smiley. Well, what happened to the Durango? I don't rightly know. I trailed him here, I thought. We did hear a horse just before Smiley rode in. Hey, if that was the Durango kid, maybe he dropped this. He's been here all right. I saw the Durango kid of that off of Pop Ryland's shirt. Pop Ryland? Yeah, them Ryland stuck me up. This stain looks like printer's ink. Well, I can tell. That's printer's ink, all right. Well, what was Pop Ryland doing with printer's ink? That's what I'd like to know, Molly. Smiley, you're going back to town. Keep your mouth shut about the Ryland boys holding you up. Well, don't you think the sheriff ought, ought to hang them, I know. But you can't be. See you later, Molly. <laughs> Tied up, I figured it was a good time to search the place. Find anything? Not a thing. You know, I've been wondering about those packing boxes you told me about. Well, the stuff's not here. I got a hunch they might contain printing equipment. 
What makes you think that? Your stepfather. I found printer's ink stain all over his left sleeve. Beats me where they could hide it. Say, what is it? It's a storeroom right under here. That's it, all right. Light that lantern. those burn pieces I found on the roof. You're right. Must have been Pop's early efforts. So he wanted them destroyed. They don't look authentic. They've been counterfeiting territorial bonds, all right. But where did they get a real bond to copy? The night they robbed the bank, six bonds were stolen. Get me something to pack this evidence in. Some saddlebags upstairs. Good. out of the shack. He was the nearest horse to me. I rode him over. Good. I'll lead him off and you get the evidence we need. I don't know just what you want. All right. You lead him off and I'll get the evidence. You bet I will. Take it as fast as you can. There ain't no kid. After him, boys. You and Dave get him, Pop. I'll watch the house. kid was after me, so I ducked down here. I may be pretty dumb, but I know my own hat and shirt when I see it. That wasn't the Durango kid. Mister, he sure fooled me. Stop it. You're the Durango kid. How do you figure that? Easy. You knew we had something big. When you tied us up, you figured it was a good time to find out just what. Do I look like Durango? That's easy, too. You didn't want to be seen riding around as Durango, so you ditched your outfit. What about the fellow you say was wearing your hat and shirt? Your partner. When we showed up, he tried to lead us off. I never heard Durango had a partner. He hasn't now, because this is the last time. on something like this. Every bond I'm under is missing. But why would Lacey take them? Because it puts us right where he wants us. If we don't cut him in, he'll turn over the sheriff and be sitting pretty. I'd like to see him try it. Don't forget he killed Tommy. And he has a letter which says I hired him to do it. That's right. Then you figure Lacey will come back and try a shakedown. Sure. Anybody home here? That's him now. We'll let him make his proposition first, then we'll make ours with 45s. The 
right with you. Are you Pop Ryland? I am. My name's McCall. Ben Trass sent me. How do I know that? You wrote Ben a letter. I got in that jam with the Durango Kid and lost it. The Durango Kid? Did he get that letter? He probably did. And Lacey shows up here with it. That's what Clint was trying to tell me. Steve Lacey is the Durango Kid. Come in. McCall? I'll give you a thousand dollars if you help us knock over the Durango. And I'll cut you in on the biggest deal this territory ever saw. You've hired a gun, Ryland. But we've got to move fast. The sheriff is due back from Border City today. And we've got to knock over the Durango before he can get to the sheriff. Why? Because Durango's got enough on me to hang me. Let's get started. How do you do? What can I do for you that ain't already been done? Oh, give me a shave and a haircut. Yes, sir. Here's the evidence that'll save our neck. Newspapers. Hi. This is a barber shop or a pool hall. <laughs> well, that's all of it. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I left it a little long on the top there. <laughs> now you've got to get Lacey. He just went in the barber shop. I'll get him. We'll see you at the ranch. Come on, Dave. We've got to get rid of that pring press. Be patient, Steve. The sheriff will be in sometime today. A few hours now may make all the difference in the world. Oh, stop jawing her. I'm going to give you a brush full of lather right in the mouth. Give him a good shave, Barber. It's his last. Don't draw, McCall. You haven't got a gun, but I have. <laughs> They turned your room upside down and stole all your evidence. Not all of it, Smiley. But by now, Pop Ryland knows I've got plenty on him. And if he destroys that press, it's going to be hard to prove anything against him. 
Where's Tommy? He's waiting in the grove where we used to meet. Good. Tell him to see your father and give him the full story. But what are you going to do? Give the Rylands a little surprise. The Durango Kid, inside. my gun. He's dead. Where's the Durango? Yeah, where is the Durango kid? He deserves a medal for this. These railings would have looted the territory. There he goes. <laughs> 